That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about a favorite of mine, Reflections in a Golden Eye, which uh, was made available on Blu-ray, courtesy of Warner Brothers Archive, on April 21st, 2020. And of course stars Elizabeth Taylor, Marlon Brando, Robert Forster, Julie Harris, um, and Brian Keith. And it is a uh, adaptation of the 1941 Carson McCullers novel. Carson McCullers, of course, wrote Heart is a Lonely Hunter. This was her uh, sophomore novel, which was not as well received. Uh, and then uh, Member of the Wedding, her third novel. She's also quite celebrated. This film is about, well, the story is a married couple. On a military base. On a military in the base. In the South. In the South. Mm -hmm. Uh, the man, who's a captain? Major. Major, I don't know these terms. Played by Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. He's married to Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. And she's hot to trot. Mm -hmm. She's fucking like... She's fucking the uh, lieutenant colonel who lives next door. So the major's like, like superior. Yeah. And he is a closeted homosexual. Mm -hmm. That's lusting for private L.G. Williams, played by Robert Forster. He's lusting for a subordinate. Mm -hmm. uh, and Robert Forster's character likes to ride around on horses bareback. So he's nude, like just riding around on these horses. Very equus. Mm -hmm. So Marlon Brando's character becomes infatuated with him. Mm -hmm. And that is ultimately his like demise. And then meanwhile, Brian Keith is married to Julie Harris. Uh, who is also well aware of the affair that her husband's having with Liz Taylor uh, and it's happened off screen prior to the start of the film but uh, due to the trauma, the mental trauma of that she cut off her nipples with a pair of garden shears. Yes. <laughs> so it's a film The that's... film ends with Robert Forrester's character like breaking into the Major's home mm -hmm. because he wants to like, well he had done it before like sniffing Elizabeth Taylor's Underwear. Underwear. Negligee, as one does. And like rubbing on her linens in the bed. So he breaks into the house at the end. And it's an interesting scene because Marlon Brando is aware of him breaking into the house, but he is deluded and thinks that... Um, uh, Robert Forrester. He, that man is going to tap on his door, but then he hears him going into Liz's room. Yeah. So he strolls in there with his gun and kills him. Mm -hmm. yep. The end. Uh, this story is uh, pretty amazing considering when it was written. Yeah, it was written in the like 40s. Like the, the original story and then the movie when it was made. In 67. Yeah, it's pretty provocative. and It is. It is. And, and it's a bold choice for Marlon Brando, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, so it was supposed to be Monty Clift. Uh, starring in the film, but he was considered uninsurable when this went into production. So Liz Taylor um, famously uh, said, "We'll pay for his. We'll insure him. We'll pay for him out of my salary." So she's going to donate her salary to him. But then he died, uh, and then it became Brando who at first turned it down. Um, God, I, there, there are so many things that I, I love about the film. Uh, like what? Well, I think it's a very human film. It sounds a lot more salacious than it actually is. Uh, and I, I hadn't read the novel before, I just read it. Um, and that was written in the 40s. So the gay content is there, but much more subtextual. The film is more explicit. Oh, this, the film is very explicit, yeah. because it Well, for 19... 67. Yeah. Yeah, because it shows, it, it takes its time showing Brando kind of stalking um, Robert Forster. And even, like, at one point, Robert Forster drops a baby Ruth rapper, and he, like, takes it home and smooths it out and keeps it. Well, salacious is a misleading word because there is no, like, sex. Marlon Brando's character doesn't actually, like, make a pass at Robert No, but there's, there's talk about sex. And Robert Forster is naked on a horse. And he's watching him. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think the moments when it relates to that that are powerful are the example of, like, when he takes the candy wrapper. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most powerful scene is... Marlon Brando's character, when he storms off on the horse, mm -hmm. he... Firebird. Because prior to that, we realized that he's not the best. The Major is not very good on horses. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There, I think that's some subtext about it, because Liz Taylor likes to ride Firebird because he's a stallion, and Robert Forster is the private that's good at riding stallions. So Marlon Brando hops on a horse because he wants to go find the private. Mm-hmm. But because he doesn't know how to handle the horse well, the horse rides him mm -hmm. and like just like races through the woods 
which is a pretty, I think, a well shot scene. Mm -hmm. And Marlon Brando is obviously not able to control himself on the horse. He's getting scraped. He ultimately falls off the horse. And then he begins to beat the horse because he's like upset about everything. Mm -hmm. And then Robert Forrester's character comes and like nude, just walks by and consoles the horse. I thought that was a very like powerful least symbolic mm -hmm. scene it, it, about desire and mm -hmm. just like uh, like misplaced desire yeah Re well repressed desire yeah and repressed but I think you know just I can't really relate to being in love with a someone who doesn't want to love me but the but but I can imagine like the frustration mm -hmm. and, the, and to literally see this person like walk by you naked mm -hmm. and console the, some, horse. the horse like fuck you and your drag like on the floor like like he just moved right past him that it, was pretty it does do a good job of making that character sympathetic because the novel i felt um like liz taylor's character in the novel is just a buffoon uh i think it really prizes allison the uh the nip julie harris's nipple woman oh also that reminds me julie harris became famous as a child star for starring a member of the wedding which was the first Carson McCullers' novel turned into a, a film. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, like the, there's just, oh, so this is the first time I've actually watched it. How It was directed by John Huston. Um, it does feel like a very Tennessee Williams who wrote that afterward in the, uh, the book version. It's not as uh, clever. Or over the top. Yeah. But John Huston uh, had previously directed um, Night of the Iguana. Uh, and that was a rough shoot, and he gave all his leads a gift at the end that was a gun with five bullets in it. Oh. <laughs> rough to work with, and that of course starred Richard Burton. Okay. Um, yes, but this is the first time that I've seen it, how it was, it was, it was released in theaters for one week with a gold tinted hue. Like the whole thing is tinted gold, which is actually, I thought, very beautiful. Um, the cinematography by uh, Eldo Tonti, uh, the Italian who did Fellini's Knights of Cabiria, among many other films. Yeah. But it was yanked out of a release uh, by Warner Brothers and uh, just restored, restored to normal color, so that's how most people saw it. Okay. Yeah, I do like the tonal effect of the original. Uh, the score is by Toshiro Maiozumi, who had uh, just was fresh off an Oscar nod for scoring John Huston's The Bible, The Beginning, the year before. Uh, Liz Taylor, this is one of my favorite, I'd call this a mid-period Liz Taylor films because she did this in Secret Ceremony and Boom all in a row, which I think are all fantastic films in their own ways. Uh, camp. Have I well. seen, I've seen Boom. You've seen Boom. What's the other one? Secret Ceremony. Have I seen that? Yeah, with Mia Farrow and uh, Robert Mitchum. I you were preoccupied. Okay. But that was after, that was just released on Blu-ray by Kino Lorber last month as well. Um, Faye Sparks, who never did another film, plays Susie, uh, Liz Taylor's maid, maid uh, who's this uh, beautiful, beautiful black woman. woman. Um, but her cackling in the kitchen with Liz Taylor was reminding me of those old 30s Mae West movies where Mae West would always kind of commiserate with, commiserate with, with help. the help. Yeah. Uh, so obviously I like Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, she's great in this film. I, you know, she kind of, her acting in a period, like in that period of time all seemed very similar. Well, shrill, yeah. yeah. Um, it, so, so you're getting what you pay for. The horse ride, you know, she broke, her breakout film in the 40s was National Velvet, which is about which is a, train, a professional horseback rider. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's some intertextual things that work there. Well, you have about a minute, so what else do you want to say? Oh, well, Carson McCullough, John Houston wanted Carson McCullough to adapt her novel, but she died this year. She was only 50. Um, oh, I, I don't know. There's just so much that I, I love about this film. Um, oh, and, you know, and we didn't even talk about Anacleto, uh, Julie Harris's Filipino who actually was played by a Filipino man named Zorro David, who also didn't never did. Yeah, know. that relationship between him and his uh, employer was interesting. Well, because he's also clearly gay. And when she decides that she's going to leave her husband, you know, she obviously wants to take him with. And she's like, how much money do you have in the bank? Like, we need to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, bitch, pay me more so I can save more money, and then we can go. Yeah. The, the, but I thought it was a sweet dynamic. It has a lot of, of complex things to say about masculinity and about how gay men and women um, had to band together and depend on one another. And, and I think that even the setting of a military base is very timeless because the 40s and the 60s, this still material feels the same because all of these people from diverse backgrounds are like thrown into this, this melting pot of a scenario and all of them aren't happy. Yeah. Uh, 
I what would you give this film? A four and a half out of five. I I, wow. I love this film. I would give it three and a half out of five. I think it's very good. Oh, and Robert Forster. It's not as it's not as uh, sort of. Uh, salacious as you, one would think no. so I think if a person is watching it for the first time thinking that they would be disappointed it's more subtle than it is more subtle. Than not. well so I did my honors thesis on suddenly last summer okay. well you've time. run over your time oh but well and we didn't even talk about Brian Keith Who's He's, that? he plays uh, the lieutenant colonel that she's fucking okay. uh, who was the only one that kind of got any critical acclaim for the film some critics group nominated him for things oh and he looks a lot like the dad from boy meets world to me. Um, I don't know. I just did. Yeah. Well, we do know you really like it. I love this film. Great. Yeah. Bye. Bye.